a very good morning children okay this so this video is on chapter 2 life of man through the stone age for class 6 history okay now today we are discussing the topic domestication of animals okay so what does domestication mean okay in simple words it means keeping of animals okay or taming of animals so it means T A M I N G, taming of animals, okay? Or it means also rearing, okay? Or nurturing animals or raising animals in your, okay, farm. Like you keep, okay, chickens, etc., no? Boiler chickens, etc., that uh, you keep boiler chickens, etc., for meat. So why are you keeping that animals? So it, it, you are keeping that animals for meat or some product like milk and meat. Okay, if you keep, okay, cows, etc., it is for milk. That means domestication of animals, okay? So, domestication means raising animals or nurturing of animals or keeping of animals in your farm, okay? So, in the Neolithic age, okay, man learned to keep animals or tame animals. Remember that, okay? So, probably dog, kutta, okay, was the first animal to be Tamed, okay in the course of time man began to keep okay other kinds of animals also like wild pigs okay sheep goat horses donkeys and cattle now these animals helped a man okay in a lot of ways for example why do you domesticate animals okay domestication of animals gives regular supply of milk and milk products like ghee etc no and it also gives you meat as a food okay and it also gives you skin so that skin of animals can be used for making various other clothes and boots isn't that so so domestication of animals started in the neolithic age besides okay this uh, Animals were not only tamed for milk and milk products and meat, but it was also used to pull carts, bullock carts, okay? Have you seen a bullock cart? Okay. So, these animals were used to pull the bullock carts, okay? To transport heavy loads from one place to another. So, they were also, donkeys were used for as a beast of burden, okay? Are you understanding? And these animals were also used to okay dig the land so that you can grow crops are you understanding so these animals used to plow the field in order to grow the crops are you understanding so they were used for various other purposes so after domestication of animals we come to the second point that is called okay impact of agriculture on man's life okay now in the impact of agriculture, so I'm writing only agriculture here, okay, it means impact of agriculture on man's life, okay. Grains, okay, grains rice, like rice grains, cereals, etc., wheat, etc., okay, or vegetable crops, basically, when you are, are a farmer. Let's take, for example, if you are a farmer, and if you, are, if you want to grow, grow rice on your field, okay, it takes three or four months, okay, to grow. If you want to grow a particular crop, it takes many months. So, you have to water the plant. You have to, okay, water the plant, okay. You have to stay near the plant, okay. You have to care for the plant. In order to do that, okay, it needs continuous care. So, for continuous care of the crops that is being grown in your field, the early man had to live near the field. Are you understanding where the crops are grown, okay? So, for a longer period of time. So, he had to live near that field for a longer period of time, okay? Till the crops get mature, so that the crops can be eaten. Are you understanding? Till the time you have to live near the, near the, near the field, in order to water the plant, in order to keep the soil moist, etc. Everything has to be, okay, basically looked after the plant if you want to grow a crop. So, in this process, they build houses near the land where the crops are being grown. So, if you build near the, uh, near the land where the crops are being grow, grown, you need water also. So, these people started building house near the river, near the land where they can easily get water from the rivers in order to, okay, water the crops. 
so this resulted in man's okay opting for settled life now they can they build houses in the spirit so in the neolithic age not only agriculture or domestication of animals started but also they started building houses so that they can look after the crops so many civilizations that flourished in the past like the oh, indus valley civilization like the chinese civilization like the okay mesopotamian civilization these people build their houses near the rivers why they build their houses near the rivers because the water is easily available for drinking purposes as well as for watering the plants as well as for washing dishes etc are you understanding as well as water is needed for making the house isn't that so so when you are building a house you need water or not are you understanding so for all these purposes they built okay the houses near the river so that they can easily uh, they can easily grow crops near the river so this people started living near the river is called river valley civilization this is called river valley civilization remember that okay agriculture on the other hand is not one man's job okay now if you are a farmer and if you have one acre of land if you want to grow crops like okay sugarcane etc sugarcane ganna okay ganna if you want to okay or uku we call it no uku in nepali ganna in hindi no so if you want to grow sugarcane in in a field that is one acre of land can you grow alone can you okay basically place a seed alone in that field no you it's not a man one man's job to do agriculture you cannot grow crops on your own you need people to help you out on the field for sowing growing watering and harvesting of crops so from the sowing of seeds to the harvesting of crops so what is sowing means sowing means okay it's written that s o w so it's written that or i n g sowing means okay placing a seed in the ground or uh, inside the ground no so if you want to grow a crop you have to first put a seed inside the ground by digging the ground that is known as sowing so what does harvesting mean h a r v e s t i n g harvesting means okay after the crop has grown after the crop has grown or it is ready to be eaten ready to be eaten so what will happen if it is ready to be eaten then you gather the crops this gathering is known as harvesting this uh, gathering is known as harvesting remember that please underline those words okay so for this job many people are needed on the field not it is not a one man's job or one man farmer's job okay this brought new change to the life of man in the neolithic age so apart from building houses domestication of animals and as well as agriculture they started living together they started living together which developed into villages which developed into villages this uh, living together is known as community life started community life started where the people were living together different families were living together in a village this is known as community this is known as community okay now we are moving on to another okay topic that is known as tools okay that is known as what tools tools now let's take for example for a student the instrument for writing on a piece of paper is pencil or pen isn't that so that is a tool that is a tool an object for writing on the piece of paper likewise also you have tools in the neolithic age okay <coughs> they started making stone tools they started making stone tools in the neolithic age okay <coughs> which are very good in quality also from the tools as compared with the paleolithic age or mesolithic age okay are you understanding so first came the paleolithic age second came the okay mesolithic age and third came the neolithic age now today we are studying neolithic age and neolithic age tools were very much advanced tools improved tools okay they were well shaped okay sharper okay like a knife as well as polished tools okay are you understanding keep that in mind the practice of agriculture and invention of whetstone now underline that whetstone w h e t whetstone 
Now, what is a whetstone? Have you seen a carpenter? When he's sharpening his basically tools, okay, the cutting tools, as a carpenter uses tools, no? When he sharpens the tools, he sharpens the tools in a stone or in a sand. That stone tool is known as a whetstone. You can basically turn the page, okay, and in page number 14, at the top, okay, left hand, okay, you find no this. In the no this, you have whetstone there. Can you see the picture of the whetstone there? In page number 14, on the left hand side, this is the picture I am talking about. On the left hand side, can you see the whetstone? Yeah, this is the stone on which you can sharpen your knives. Are you understanding? This is known as whetstone, okay? <coughs> so, the practice of agriculture and invention of whetstone. So, in the Neolithic age, they invented the whetstone also, which brought improvement in stone tools. They were sharper, they were well shaped and polished, okay? And they use, the farmers use basically hard stones, okay? that could be used in agriculture for digging the earth or tilling the land, okay? Among notable tools were polished stone axe. Please underline that polished or circle it, polished tools. So in the Neolithic age, you find polished stone tools and polished stone axe is okay mentioned in your book, okay? Among notable tools were polished stone axe. Then second one is sickle. Sickle picture you find in page number 13 only. Sickle picture. Can you see the sickle picture there? On the right hand side, you find a sickle picture. It is made of stone. It is made of stone, which basically dates back to 3000 BCE. Okay, it is made of stone. It is not made of iron. Okay, are you understanding? Today, farmers basically use, okay, sickle. Sickle means hasia. Have you seen hasia? Okay, hasia. Like this kind of sickle. Okay. This kind of, okay, basically, okay, uh, knife is used for cutting grass. This is known as sickle. In Hindi, what, it, what we call, I don't know, okay. So, I'm telling you, this is known as sickle, okay. Sickle was used and digging wooden sticks were used, okay, which had a stone mesh head, okay. They had a handle. They had a handle, okay, or stone was placed here, or stone was placed here, okay, or stone was placed here, okay. This, it looks like a hammer. But it was used for digging the earth. This is known as, okay, digging wooden stick with a stone mess head, okay. Other tools were bladelets, okay. Now, today also, okay, at home you have knives. Today also at home you have knives, okay. What are bladelets? B-L-A-D-E, blade, L-E-T-S, lets, it's written there, okay. Now, if you look at the bladelets, okay, these are edge tools, okay, or flat steel blade or knife, we call it, okay. But they were made of stones in the Neolithic age. They were not made of iron. They were made of stones. And they basically had, okay, like if I make a knife here, if I make a knife here, okay, if I make a knife here, okay, if I make a knife here, okay, now it has got sharp edge here sharp edge here, but it has got blunt. From this side, you can cut the meat. From this side, you can cut the meat. So, from one side, it is blunt. From one side, it is sharp. This is known as bladelets. This is known as bladelets. Remember that, okay? So, other tools were bladelets, okay? There are knives, then chisel. Chisel means, okay, uh, uh, have you seen statues, etc.? So, you know, so the person who is making a statue, basically, okay? Sculpture, a person who makes a statue is called a sculpture, okay, basically, when he makes, makes that statue, he makes the statue with a, okay, chisel, with a chisel and a mallet, with a chisel and a mallet. What is chisel? Chisel means nail. Chisel means nail. And what is mallet? Mallet means hammer, or in understanding. So, chisel and hammer were also found in that Neolithic period by archaeologists. So, they told us various information about the Neolithic age. Polished stone axe <coughs> was an important tool because it helped them to clear forests. Now, why do you want to cut down trees? You cannot build houses on top of a tree. Can you grow crops on top of a tree? First, you have to cut the trees, level the land, then you can grow crops or build houses 
or clothes. For that, you need cutting tool. And the people in the Neolithic age used stone axe. What is an axe? Have you seen an axe? Okay. If you haven't seen an axe, this is called an axe, no? This is called an, called an axe which is used for cutting trees, etc. Yeah? Do you know that? Or oh, it will have only one side only. It will have only one side only. That is called an axe which is used for cutting trees. And why they cut the trees? To level the lands, to build houses or to grow crops. Are you understanding? So polished stone axe was an important tool because it helped them to clear thick forests to make the land flat and fit for growing crops and build huts. So they did not have pakka houses like cement houses. They had temporary houses like huts. Okay. The bow and arrow was also okay used in this period. Okay. So bow and arrow is used for hunting. Are you understanding? In India, new stone age tools have been found at Jusi, that is in Karnataka, okay, underline that one, and Adi Chana Lur in Tamil Nadu, okay. Now we are moving on to invention of wheel, okay. Invention of wheel. Now, today, okay, you travel by cars, etc., from one place to another. If the wheel was not invented in the Neolithic age, do you think you'll be traveling by car or bus, etc., or a train? Okay, are you understanding? In, even the airplane has got wheels, no? Are you understanding? Even your bicycle has got wheels, okay? So, when did the wheel got invented? It get invented in the Neolithic age, okay? So, Neolithic man's intelligence led him to invent the wheel. A round trunk of a felled tree. Now, tree has a trunk. Tree has a trunk. Now, if I make a tree, tree has a trunk. This is round in shape. This trunk is round in shape or not? Are you understanding? When they cut down the trees, okay, when the Neolithic man cut down the trees, the tree, tree might have rolled. The trunk of the tree might have rolled. Are you understanding? And this might have given the idea of a wheel, okay? When he cut the round trunk of, a, of the tree, okay, a hood, it might have rolled down the hill, etc. This occurred to him the idea of the wheel, okay. The invention of wheel changed the man, okay, or life of man, okay, forever. As a result, a wheeled vehicle is present today. Cars are present today because if the wheel was not invented, do you think you'll be traveling by car? No. So, these people basically invented the wheel. That is the Neolithic people. Okay, are you understanding? The wheel cart made traveling much simpler and comfortable in the Neolithic age. So, they use not cars, they use bullock carts, no? With wheels, are you understanding? It appears that the wheel was first used for making pottery. Have you seen, okay, pottery walla who is making pots? They use a wheel, okay? They basically spin the wheel. And on top of the wheels, let's take for example, this is a wheel. Okay, let's take for example, this is a wheel. I'm making a wheel here. Okay, I'm making a wheel here. On top of this wheel, okay, they place a pot. They place a mud here. And this mud is basically turned into a pot, a gamla, a rinasaning, which is made of mud. How they make it? With the hands, by turning the wheel very fast. That is known as a potter's wheel. That is known as a potter's wheel. So this is known as a P O. T T E R apostrophe as Potter's wheel. So when they invented the wheel, what happened? They used the, this wheel for making pots. Okay, they can make more pots in a faster way. Are you understanding? And better pots are you understanding? So the wheel was also used in spinning and weaving cotton and woolen clothes. Now today we wear woolen clothes as well as cotton clothes. Cotton clothes are worn during Summer season or winter season? Summer season. Whereas woolen cloths are worn during winter season. So how is that possible that, uh, that these people knew about how to make cloths? It is due to the invention of the wheel. Due to the invention of the wheel, okay, they were able to okay, make okay, the cotton into a yarn that is in a thread. And the thread was basically uh, okay, used for making cloth. If you see, Gandhiji also is turning a wheel in the picture in your currency, etc., in your notes, etc., you find Gandhiji has a, has a picture where he has a wheel there. He is making dhaga there. That wheel is used for making dhaga. And dhaga can be turned into a cloth. 
are understanding. This process was basically started during the Neolithic age, not Gandhiji. It was started by the Neolithic man, are understanding. With this, okay, I have finished some of the important topics. In the next class, I'll be, okay, doing pottery, okay? Hope you find this lesson useful. Thank you for listening.